हाँ टुडे इवनिंग द स्काइज आर एक्सपेक्टेड टू बी क्लियर ऑफ क्लाउड्स अ परफेक्ट टाइम टू प्ले आउट डोर्स टाइम टू प्ले आई से यू हैवेंट फिनिश योर होमवर्क येट नो होमवर्क नो प्ले ओप्स माय पुअर फ्रेंड he could get a prediction about the weather this evening but he couldn't predict his mother's mood shh inside information he doesn't know that his mother has just fought with her sister on the phone <laughs> while our friend is not aware of the factors affecting his mother's mood scientists called meteorologists keep a close eye on the factors affecting the weather actually Let me check what the weather is right now. Oh, it's raining. Hey, how is it around you? Let us know in the comment section below. I'm sure that some of you might be experiencing rain, clouds, humidity, or dryness in the weather. The weather describes the atmosphere at a certain place and at a certain time. The atmosphere changes from one place to another. Also, the atmosphere keeps changing with time. That is why the weather doesn't remain the same at all times. Sometimes we experience cold weather. Sometimes hot. Sometimes we may also experience rain. And then there are bright sunny days. Wow. This weather seems to be constantly changing. So then How do the meteorologists predict how the weather is going to be after a few hours? After a few days or even a month in advance? Well, to answer that question, let me give you an idea. Project Mom. Suppose you observe your mom from a distance for one week and make a note of what causes her bad mood. What will happen after a week? You will be able to predict when she might be in a bad mood and you will decide whether or not to ask her for a treat. Similarly, meteorologists observe different components of weather for a long period of time. So, do they sit and watch the sky? <laughs> not so simple. They use many advanced instruments to collect information from the different parts of the sky. One of the interesting ways of collecting this information is to release weather balloons in the sky. These weather balloons carry devices called radio sonds to different altitudes in the sky. The radio sonds contain small sensors to measure parameters like air pressure, temperature, and relative humidity at different heights of the sky from the Earth's surface. They send these measurements back to us using radio signals. Once the meteorologists sitting in the weather stations receive this information from up in the sky, analyze it using their knowledge of the atmosphere. Let us look at a particular analysis of temperature and humidity with respect to the height from the sea level or the altitude. From the blue line on the graph, we can observe that the temperature generally becomes colder as we move upwards in the atmosphere the green line is a way of showing the humidity of the air when the green line is close to the blue line the air is saturated with water vapor and it is very humid on the other hand when the two lines are largely separated the water vapor content in the air is less and the air is dry meteorologists can use the shape of these graphs to predict the weather this graph for example shows that the air in the lower layers of the atmosphere is quite humid while the air above it is very dry this alerts them to watch out for the possibility of rainfall or snowfall temperature and humidity are just two factors The weather depends on many such factors. There is a huge amount of data that is collected from different parts of the atmosphere all over the world and is fed into supercomputers. These powerful machines 
create a tiny model of the atmosphere. The weather forecasters then play the weather god by observing this tiny version of the atmosphere and predicting how the atmosphere is changing. Based on how the different factors affecting the weather change with time, they predict what the weather at a future time would be. Did you know that satellites orbiting the Earth are also used to collect data and make weather forecasts? But that's a discussion for another time. Right now, I want to tell you that it is not just the weather balloons or the satellites. You and I can also do some weather predictions. Air pressure is an important indicator of weather. Low pressure in a region usually indicates rainy weather, while high pressure in a region indicates fair and calm weather in that region. Winds also blow from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. Do you know that a simple instrument called a barometer can be used to measure the air pressure? I learned about it on Baiju's The Learning app. And I made my own barometer. We can also find out the direction in which the wind is blowing by simply observing the movement of different objects. Now, if I threw this flower petal in the air, it would move in the direction of the wind. Let's see. Can you think of a few more ways to predict the direction of the wind? Think about it and let us know in the comment section below. Also let us know if you want to pick up Project Mom. I mean, Project Weather for your location. See you!